Back on Inside Tennessee, Ms. Carson. So let's go. You talk about the disengaged mm -hmm. and the people who don't vote. What are you doing as a party to get the the 18 year olds, the 17 year olds, those who can get engaged mm -hmm. to get them started? We are talking to people wherever they are. Uh, I have been so excited in the few months that I've been in office to see how uh, excited and enthused um, our volunteers are uh, to get out into their communities. And so we are going wherever folks are and talking to folks about the issues that are important to them. And really, with especially when we think about you know our kind of 18 to 34-year-old mm -hmm. block, it really is about talking about the issues that are important to them. Um, Which I'm is, what, what, yeah, would what, say? Issues? what would you say they're, they're saying are important? Yeah, well, I think a lot of it are your social justice issues, um, of course, economic issues. There's a lot of economic insecurity, you know, to think about the fact that everybody tells you that you need to go to college, but you may leave with a lot of student loan debt and may not be able to find a job or housing or, you know, health care. A lot of the same issues that are important to everyone else are important to them also, but they are also really concerned about the social issues. They're concerned about their safety. You know, they want to know what people are going to do to keep them safe, especially when we think about our 18-year-olds who are coming um, out of high school, I think I probably was in the early generation of school shootings, mm -hmm. uh, and now that is something that has become very normal, unfortunately, for our young people that they are having to do these drills in the same way that we did, you know, tornado drills and things like that. They're doing mass shooting drills and considering buying bulletproof backpacks. And so talking about the issues that are important to them and talking about them in a very real way and helping them also to understand how politics, how their elected officials have the capacity to impact their lives because a lot of them feel like it just doesn't matter. Um, and so helping them to understand that, that they have an opportunity to have a voice and to engage is really the biggest thing. Well, I think us. we often miss the, the opportunity to let them not only know that, mm -hmm. but to know how their voice can can impact, you know, it, it's it's their vote, and it's particularly in local politics yeah, that absolutely. make a huge difference. Absolutely, and one of the things that I think we really also focus on is engaging them, you know, in the party process. And so I am actually the oldest person on our executive committee, <laughs> um, and I won't tell you how old I am, but I'm the oldest person on our executive committee, and we see a lot of our candidates utilizing, you know, college students or recent grads either as, you know, campaign managers or field staff or directors to get them engaged in the process and help them to understand how they can have a more direct impact. 2020 is just around the corner. It's right around the corner. And it's going to be an enormous year for politics, regardless of what party you're in. It is. It's obviously, we'll have a presidential race, and if anything, we'll boost turnout. Mm -hmm. That is it. Are you all prepared for that, or uh, what's your strategy? We are constantly working to be prepared for that. I don't know that you can ever fully, you know, prepare and expect, uh, but especially, you know, in the Democratic primary, we have a lot of candidates running, uh, which means a lot of opinions <laughs> uh, and ideas in the marketplace, but it also means a lot of engagement and volunteers who um, are excited about their candidate and what we're really focused on is making sure that we continue even after the primary season is over that we continue to engage those folks so that even if their candidate didn't win we continue to pull them in and keep them engaged in the process um, so we're very excited about 2020 we're already looking in that direction and not just the presidential but also with our county races and our state races mm -hmm. and making sure that we're recruiting strong candidates uh, that folks are going to want to get out and vote for that they're talking about issues uh, like I said our volunteers have been out for months engaging with potential volunteers and folks in their communities and registering voters and so we are really really excited about 2020. Only about 30 seconds left but did you think strategically it was a good idea for the council members uh, who were running to put themselves on a slate together? There were three people who did that running in various um, races in this last election. Amelia Parker was the one who was successful in uh, moving on into the regular election. Do you think we'll see more things like that or, or perhaps not? Well, you know, um, I think that there are benefits. If you find people in races who are similarly aligned and are running on issues, it can give you a great opportunity to maximize your contacts um, and to reach more voters. Uh, one of the things, for example, that we have done uh, in the previous cycle uh, on the Democratic side was run a coordinated campaign uh, with our candidates, which gives us an opportunity to reach more voters. So anything you can do to reach more voters is a good thing. Thank you, Ms. Biddlebrook. We'll end it there. Thank you for watching Inside Tennessee. Hope you see you back here next week.